once again i take this opportunity to uh, thank the organizers of this uh, conference now i'll be dissect i'll be discussing hydro dissection and i think when it comes to phacoemulsification most of us will agree that it's every step of the surgery matters and if you fault at one step it probably tends to show up in the end of the surgery as a complication why is it important in phacoemulsification to have a good hydro dissection and there are two ways of hydro dissecting there is a hydro dissection and there is a hydro delineation delineation is basically to delineate the nucleus out of the epinucleus area uh we don't tend to delineate in our clinic now because we tend to hydro dissect or what we call a cortical cleavage hydro dissection the purpose of which is to cleave or form a cleavage plane between the capsular bag and the whole of nuclear material which is the nucleus and the epinucleus including principally for the purpose of free mobility of the lens inside the capsular bag which eventually will translate to lesser transmittance of these forces of dragging and shearing when we are rotating the nucleus out and uh, as a side effect it can also help us detach a lot of epithelial cells and sometimes prevent uh, long term pco development the first uh, technique described by dr howard fine was that of a cortical cleaving hydro dissection which was uh, published back in 1992 and from then on the whole uh, so he started and this is just an old video showing you an ideal technique of a cortical cleaving hydro dissection the idea is to put your uh, cannula deep inside under the anterior capsule tent up the anterior capsule with the fluid wave towards the fornices and inject and look for a wave of fluid passing behind the nucleus and that would be a good cortical cleaving hydro dissection i'll just show today's modification of this purpose attending is essentially the same that except for here we are using our own modification of an akahoshi cannula it's a small vent cannula but uh, unlike a routine cannula we tend to go inside the anterior capsule but without tenting the anterior capsule maybe a little deeper down posting towards the equator aiming towards the equator of the lens and then inject a short burst of fluid once you see the wave of fluid passing you can just enhance it and make sure that the wave passes completely you don't have to over hydrate but just now just one wave of fluid should be enough for you to understand that a hydro wave have, has cleaved the nucleus uh, this is a series of experiments done uh, by dr vishal and dr viraj in uh, more and i center a few years back and this is a posterior view or a miyake apple view of how it look from inside and notice how the fluid wave when you pass can sometimes not pass only as a wave of fluid from one direction to the other but also the circular wave so it is not necessary that your fluid motion may be in one direction from yours from distal to the nasal end but can also pass as a straight circular wave of fluid uh, a lot of uh, studies have been done including the one over here showing that multi quadrant hydro dissection can make the cortex removal easier for and phaco emulsification faster uh as a benefit it can help in cleaning up the cortical cells in the equator and when reducing pco and that also has been published by us that in patients who had the uh, cortical giving hydro dissection rates of pco were uh, significantly less in patients after having dissected the uh, delineated dissected the lens the next important thing is rotating the lens because only when you are able to rotate the lens is the lens free from and mobile and those chopping maneuvers and uh, division maneuvers can be easy removing the lens can be very very easy and essentially initially we were doing it after doing hydro dissection we were using a blunt spatula at one end to rotate the lens and see if the lens is freely mobile uh there has been a study by us which compared the effect of hydro dissection alone and that combined with rotation of the uh, nucleus to look at how much of lecs were cleared up and it shows clearly that if you dissect and you rotate uh, you can remove significant amount of equatorial lens epithelial cells and these are the cells eventually that will cause a pco development in a patient's eye but a big problem in this is this is okay for a stromal cataract but in patients who have these adhesions these advanced cortical cataracts or what we would like to call cortico capsular adhesions because these are actually mechanical adhesions between the capsule and the lens substance this comes up with a problem and it's easy to make this out because in patients you'll see this white band in periphery particularly these diabetic cataracts that will just not rotate so i think a good uh, idea in this case like we'll just start with this patient over here if you notice over here this patient although having a good hydro dissection done is not rotating any extra maneuver that you're going to do is going to transmit on the zonules which is i think pretty easy to make out you're putting so much stress on the capsular bag that at some point in time you can either cause a dialysis or cause a zonular weakness in some area or the other because all this shearing force eventually because the nucleus is not moving is being transmitted to the ciliary body and the zonules a good idea in this case or a remedy primarily now would be to do a multi quadrant hydro dissection having identified that the patient has like in this case the patient has certain cortical opacities here after passing one wave of fluid and decompressing the lens it would be a good idea to use some other techniques either use the same cannula or use a right angled left angled or a j cannula to approach the site of the cortical uh, cataract because the site of these adhesions and reinject in these areas because this is where the cleavage will not happen in the primary cleavage plane so maybe a multiple area go right go left go backwards like over here we use the right cannula and then again at a certain point in time use the left handed cannula to inject on the left side of the lens 
and that would make the rotation very easy another very important pearl is that you can hydro dissect at any stage of surgery it is not like only after a after a capsule resection you can hydrate once and then you have to go on with the surgery and just highlight this with the case over here and we we've done a hydro dissection in this patient so i'm sorry about the video not playing but the idea is if your if your nucleus doesn't rotate at any point in the surgery you can come out there is no ego issue involved in this go back inside the eye although having filled the eye with the mild grade viscoelastic go inside the eye in the area which is not hydro dissected and repeat injections again by using either a right or a left cannula or using the same cannula that you've been using but there is one thing that you need we need to be very very aware of and that is anterior capsular blockage or what we would like to call intraoperative capsular blockage the problem with anterior capsular blockage and how to recognize it and why does it happen it's because when you injecting a hydrofluid wave inside the eye the whole lens tends to bulge upwards now for whatever reason if your capsular if the lens is big or if your capsular excess is small in size the edges of the capsular excess will be blocked by the lens material and so the fluid wave will not be able to pass completely this can be easily made out clinically also because you will find a sudden shallowing of the anterior chamber and a tense taut globe in this case like over here if you notice over here if you, you notice how the lens comes up entirely and the capsular excess tends to sort of enlarge in size because it is being pulled by the lens substance the anterior chamber has completely shallowed any attempt at this point in time to decompress the lens may not be possible because there is an entrapment of fluid and if too much of force is given it may actually cause a blowout rupture in the posterior capsule because of so much fluid behind the lens and mostly the uh, rotation maneuvers may not be successful a good idea in this case would be to forget about rotation of the lens and to first divide the lens by whatever technique you are comfortable with if it's a moderate density cataract that can be choppable chop the cataract because once you co cause the cleavage plane or a dissection plane the fluid wave will find a way to transgress out into the anterior chamber and this will this will deepen your anterior chamber make surgery more predictable and will help in rotation of the lens as well and then you can go on with surgery as is planned as has been beautifully shown by this animation here uh just to highlight this before i finish up is this patient with the anterior capsular blockage that we observed the last time notice how shallow the anterior chamber is if you notice this is a slit attachment on the operating microscope or uh, telling us how shallow the anterior chamber is but the moment we chop the whole chamber deepens because it finds a way out and then then it becomes easy to go ahead with the surgery so in any place where you are finding it difficult to rotate and you find that the anterior chamber is shallowing good idea would be to chop first and then rotate the lens it is not necessary to rotate the lens before chopping as a technique we have stopped the uh, attempting rotation so after we do hydro dissection in our clinic we first chop the lens or divide the lens and then rotate intraoperative capsular block is a more extended version of this where the anterior capsule because of the anterior capsule the posterior capsule can actually sometimes burst open because uh, because the uh, hydro dissection was not decompressed uh i would just a word of caution avoid hydro dissection in certain types of cataracts most like a polar posterior polar cataracts most of these cataracts will have either a pre existing defect or a very very weak uh, anterior cap posterior capsule and in co advanced cortical cataracts or total cataracts because we don't know the uh, status of the posterior capsule at these again very dense cataracts also we tend to avoid hydro dissection because there is no place for the fluid to pass through so just to end this with uh, basic pearls you always look for a passage of fluid wave do a multi cord and hydro dissection at least in cases where there are dense cortical adhesions and uh, it can be repeated a hydro dissection can be repeated at any stage of surgery there is no equation involved in that and please look out for an intra anterior capsular blockage and for this reason make an adequate size rexus and not a very very small rexus thank you